I think we're recording finally. So what's up, K Paso Fabio? What's up, man? Thank you for coming back. And I want to start off by saying you're a millionaire. You're I think you even say you're a self-proclaimed multimillionaire, but dude, yeah. honestly, I don't see a top hat, I don't see a tuxedo, and I don't see a monocle. So what's up with that? Are you indeed really a millionaire? And where's your bank vault full of coins to swim around in? Yeah, the uh, bank vault is downstairs. I swim in it daily, morning and night. No, I, I, all kidding aside, uh, I kind of just call myself the millionaire next door, that type of uh, mentality. It's a lot more popular these days and kind of, you know, the millionaire next door book kind of started it all, the fire movement, etc. More and more people are becoming wealthy and they're just understated. I actually don't even like talking about this, but I want to give back and help people and, you know, tell the story, try to help you know, answer any questions, things like that. Hell yeah, man. So you wrote, you even wrote a book. You love helping people. Um, yeah. I guess tell us just, you know, give the quick uh, elevator uh, brief. I'll have a link up here somewhere about our, our chat from about a year ago we had. So yeah, just I, tell those that I'm are new positive. and don't know, I have a clue who you are, just who you are, where you come from and, and a little bit about your book. Yeah. So um, actually I've written a lot of eBooks throughout the years and um, three self-published books, um, The Wealthy Pauper, The Secrets of Wealth, and uh, the last book that uh, you and I connected over and talked about last time is The Dividend Millionaire. Um, and that book really just came out of a love of uh, dividend paying stocks, trying to understand how I could create uh, you know, a second income or a, a passive income stream for myself. So that really was a labor of love. I kind of went down the rabbit hole during COVID learning about uh, dividend investing, reached out a couple of mentors and things of that nature, and then just pulled it all together. Uh, kind of because I I saw a lot of um, bad advice on Twitter or X as it's called now, and uh, I was like, this I just got to set the record straight, and so that's why. The I wrote the book, basically. Yeah, dude, it's a really good book for for those of you. I mean, ten bucks. Uh, link down below. I would re really recommend checking it out. It's very cool because it's very story oriented. It's like literally reading a story, which I I really connected with. Very easy to follow and understand. And so, where are you from? I I want to let everybody know. Yeah, originally from Westchester, New York, and uh, met a Jersey girl at work and got married and moved to Jersey. So I've I've been here for twenty years, and that's. Uh, that's where I am. No, uh, no plans on leaving because I'm in Illinois. I mean, you always know I'm from Chicago and everybody seems to hate Illinois, hate New York. But <laughs> yeah, no, no plans. on. I get my, my family and friends are in Westchester and, you know, in Jersey and stuff. And for me, it's all about family and, and being close to it. Milder winters lately make it a little bit more bearable than, you know, Illinois where you, where you are. But uh, no plans on moving. Oh my God. I said New York, man. I mean, New Jersey. You know, I think I oh, get good. it from watching The Sopranos yes. because it's just, it's so close. I've never really been over in that area, but you guys are pretty much neighbors, right? 100%. I mean, yeah, I've worked in the city in the past. It's, you know, for me, it's 20, 30 minutes there, uh, right over the bridge, uh, GW. So it's close by, you know, and uh, over the other bridge to visit family and friends. So um, definitely 20, 30 minutes away, depending where you live. A million dollars in New Jersey, even being a millionaire in New Jersey, that's uh, so, well, they always right. There's that joke that a that million dollars ain't what it used to be. And it's, yeah. uh, you know, it's, it's not going to be. But anyway, we all want that. I think it's a good milestone. And maybe you can touch 100%. on how it, the uh, Warren Buffett is always famously saying, and I, you know, my wife tells me sometimes I, I need to stop reading so much Warren Buffett <laughs> because pretty soon I'm going to start dressing and looking like the guy. Yeah. Thankfully not yet, but yeah. Uh, yeah. he talks about money will only make you happy up until a certain point. Right. And after that, like he's known lots of sad billionaires with the B. So right. Like, how does the money affect you? I mean, is it being a millionaire? Is it, is it all it's cracked up to be? What is your, uh, what are some of your thoughts yeah. on millionaire status? I mean, uh, first back to your thing about a million isn't what it used to be. hundred percent, you know, obviously inflation, cost of living. I live in a high cost of living area, et cetera. Um, you know, I, I read about people, fire movement, retiring with a million bucks, uh, either they're solo or even with, uh, kids. I have two kids. Uh, I could not retire on a million bucks where I live. That being said, the milestones are great. The first 100K was a massive milestone for me after I was in, deeply in debt and just spending like crazy. I, I got my money right, learned the financial habits. We can get into all of them. Uh, they're kind of boring, but they just need to be done. Uh, so when I hit that, it was like 
a validation that the plan I was on and that I set up for myself was working. And then I just threw myself into work, threw myself into, you know, marriage and all that other stuff. And then, you know, you, you chugging along good stock market, house appreciation and stuff. All of a sudden, you know, you wake up one day. Well, I didn't wake up the day. I was actually watching the market that day and I'm like, Oh my God. Uh, you know, and you hit the, the millionaire mark and you come home and you're like, Hey, let's celebrate. You get some pizza and then it's back to work the next day. And that's the way I've approached it every day. It's, uh, hasn't really changed who I am. Yeah. I think, you know, what you just described to me is it, it's, it literally is a number on a spreadsheet. It becomes your new normal. And again, yeah. like the money gives you options that from what I've read, obviously I'm not a millionaire yet. We're getting close. We're getting, getting close. There. We're not there yet, but it just gives you options. And you mentioned the fire movement. I mean, how important is it to you, like friends and family? Would you ever do the geo arbitrage thing where you move somewhere cheaper to yeah. save more money, make your I, dollar go further? Not, not right now. I've thought about it sometimes, you know, you do, like sometimes you're like, are you house poor? You know, it's like you live a high, high taxes, high cost of everything. And then, you know, some family have moved uh, a little further South or to cheaper areas, uh, not just for, expense reasons, but for quality of living, uh, warmer weather, things like that. But as I said uh, earlier, all my friends and family are around here. Um, for me, it's just part of um, the expenses I need to have and to cover. Now, when my kids are in college, they're 10 right now, twins, uh, maybe we decide, hey, you know, let's move. But for right now, we're, we're tied to this area. Uh, you talked about being uh, getting out of debt and yep. mentioning your, the boring financial habits. So like, what, what do you think is the most important financial habit to put somebody on the path to becoming, you know, hitting that much heralded millionaire status? Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the starting point's going to annoy everybody, but it's saving, right? So there's two two things. Lately, I've been listening to some podcasts and things like that where people rail against the savers saying, oh, if, you know, if you how much can you save? There's only so much you can save. And then you got to focus on income. Well, a lot of people focus on income and spend it all. So if you, you learn how to live below your means, et cetera, and save and invest the difference, that's going to put you on the path. And I always point to people, I don't know it off the top of my head, but Mr. Money Mustache had a chart, basically how much you percentage you save, how fast can you retire? Uh, and it's the similar one to like uh, the book. I read it. It's dense uh, early retirement extreme where he went to extreme Jacob Lung Fisker, Fisker or something like that. And it was just like, Hey, if you save 20% of your income every year and you invest it even conservatively in the market, you know, you're going to probably turn out pretty well pretty quickly. Uh, and if you save 30% or 40%, you're going to retire like before you know it. So that starts it. And then, you know, there's five or six other things that you can do, like make more money, invest better, you know, and protecting your money that are key steps. But it all becomes just part of a habit, an operational plan that you put in place. You know, you, you made me think about because I have teenage daughters and I was telling you mm -hmm. 16 and 15, yeah. mm, I've been trying to beat it into their heads saying, this is how you become financially independent is every dollar that you come across. So if you have a dollar lands in your hand, you don't have a dollar, you have 90 cents or yeah. 80 cents. And the lower you can go, the faster you will reach that. And I, you know, I'm like, I know it sucks. It sucks because yeah. you got a dollar. But if you don't want to be, you know, in financial straits and servitude for the rest of your life, literally, you have 80 cents there. Figure out how to pay your bills, eat and live and have fun on that 80 cents. And, and that's the way you do it. I forget if it's uh, it might be Mark Cuban or someone has said, um, you know, this best advice you can give someone is to live like a college student for as long as possible. So as <laughs> as you get out of college, you just remember the stuff that you wore and the food you ate and all like how cheap you were because you weren't making a ton of money and you were living with a bunch of other people cutting costs and stuff like that. It's just that ramen noodle diet like okay, if the, the longer you can do it, you know, Alex Hormozzi living in the gym and some of that, those crazy kind of, you know, stories, but it's just that mindset of, I don't want lifestyle inflation coming up too high. And to your point, not even spending a dollar, spending a dollar, $10, dollar 20 yep. with, with debt and credit cards and things of that nature, where it's so easy to do. That's the trap I fell into right after college. I just spent everything, Same. everything. And, uh, that was the epiphany I had. I was, working for four years, I was living at home. Um, and I was still in debt. And we had a negative net worth at age 25. And it just it was just like the first time I had 
looked at a spreadsheet and I loved numbers and all this. I had a finance major. I was a finance major undergrad, never learned personal finance. And that's where I got the bug, read all the books, you know, Millionaire Next Door, Automatic Millionaire, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, all these things. And you realize, okay, well, I don't want any more doodads. I want to start paying down my bad debt and I want to start investing the right way. Stop trying to chase stocks and hot, you know, hot, that type of stuff. And it, it just clicked. And then it took it took 11 years, you know, for me to hit you know the millionaire status at 36. But it was just that I, I said I had enough. Um, I'm going to invest in myself, the skills. I'm going to do that type of thing. Invest in the market is my choice of a uh, vehicle. Um, but you can get there in many different ways. Um, you know, real estate, you know, start a business, et cetera. I just cho chose the stock market. Oh yeah, man. There's more than one way to financial heaven and it, you just have to do it. You have to buckle down. Yeah. You, I, I mean, you're going to have to delay gratification if you want to get to where you're going. And, you know, I don't know what that's like to live as a college student because I never went to college. Yeah. I did the military thing. And, you know, as I tell my wife, unfortunately, I look at some of these in the late 90s. If I would have invested some money where yeah. some of these things just and just sat on your ass, just that's it. find good businesses and you don't have to do anything, which can tie to our next topic. But right. unfortunately... This guy, uh, I'd say every dollar and 10 cents of my $1 that came my way went to uh, casinos, gentlemen's clubs, uh, nightclubs, and pubs. Yeah. And it was just awful. It was all gone. Anyway, so yeah. we can't go back in the past, right? But we can no, take a yeah. lesson and apply that to what we do next. So I guess that can bring us to like what you talk about, the dividend million, you know, mm -hmm. making enough money to start earning income. Cause right. Like I, I talk about it, my favorite quote, and I see it every time I leave the house is Warren Buffett saying, if you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you will work yeah. until you die. I qualify that saying that the dude, you know, he's in his mid nineties and he's still you know working, but he, no he actually retired in 1969, folded his partnership. Anyway, that before we go down that rabbit hole, so yeah. <laughs> uh, the power of dividends, what drew you to dividends? What, what was some of your first experiences with it? And maybe yeah. a couple things, uh, you know, you wish you did differently. Yeah. I, I pr primarily am a growth invest stock investor. So still the bulk of what I have and own and everything. And even my mindset is, is growth investing, but it was in 2020. I was actually laid off from my job. Basically good luck getting another job. Uh, we Can you share assets. what you do? Do you want to share that? what you do? I'm a mar in marketing. So I'm a senior director of marketing, uh, you know, various companies and stuff like brand management. So not the, you know, the stuff I, I just love it. I, you know, I've been doing it for, for, close to 30 years. Um, I, I love leading teams. I love, you know, empowering them to be better and do better and, and things of that nature. I love the craft. Right now I'm doing a lot of copywriting uh, for the team uh, as we we're waiting for our next copywriter to come on. So I Ooh. love to write. They don't know. I don't think they know about my writing days. You, you know, know, this guy, Jim Edwards, Jim Edwards <laughs> read the book, you know, all of those stuff like Dan Kennedy, like, you know, Gary Halbert and all the, the copywriters and stuff like that have read their stuff. But yeah, so again, that's that's what I do, um, you know, for a living, uh, et cetera. And for me in 2020, I just, you know, I discovered Twitter at the time, now x.com, and just started reading up. And I just saw all this stuff about dividends. And I'm like, dividends? I'm like, what are you guys talking about? And then I just, a couple of accounts um, on there were just posting how much they made a month and dividends. And I'm like, okay. I live in a high cost area, but I, I'll take that, you know, and it's like, what's the size of their portfolio? And I found a lot of them were like, you know, investing in like 10%, 12% payers and things like that. I'm like, all right, that can't be sustainable. I know finance and math and stuff like that, but it just led me down the rabbit hole, following a bunch of accounts, reading a ton of books, listening to podcasts and stuff. And I kind of came up with a little bit of my own way reached out to some mentors and investors I know, just fell in love. You know, you can you can buy a stock today and then every quarter or sometimes every month they pay you uh, and it just grows and grows and compounds, it's sometimes tax-free. So that's, that's why I got hooked, you know, potentially replacing my income with the work I was going to do in the next couple of years. Yeah, dollar by dollar. That's the way I look at it. And it can be daunting at first, but 
-hmm. you know, like you say, I mean, in the book, you, you talk about how to go from zero to a hundred thousand dollars in passive income. Well, the way I look at it, you can't get to a hundred thousand dollars in passive income without that first $1 and that first hundred dollars. And I mean, you have to start somewhere if that's something you want to do. And, uh, do, have you found that? So do you have a target that you're working towards in passive income? And I mean, do you find that it's exciting in the beginning, right? Because when you find something new, but then after you yeah. do it for a few <laughs> years, does it start to get kind of like that boring middle? And, and how do you stay motivated to, yeah, to it, keep going? It, yeah, the, the main thing that keeps you motivated. Um, so yes, exactly what you said. The start of it is amazing because you put in a couple of bucks or I had other assets. I moved things around and you know I kind of bought my way in from my other stuff. I essentially started dividend real dividend investing at like what 47 something like that age and but i've been investing for 25 plus years you know so uh move things around kind of reconstructed my portfolio and you know so i bumped up to a certain amount right away and then i'm like okay let me add some more move things and then it gets exciting but then it plateaus and then you're like well geez if you just do the math I mean, this is like 20, 30 years from now, it would it would be like 100K. And that could be a little bit like, ah, uh, you know, but you just sit there and say, well, what work did I do to get there? A little bit up front. And then all I do is put it on an autopilot, just reinvest my dividends, check, check, check on infidelity to reinvest in the in the security, reinvest in the security. Uh, if if it's in a retirement account, it's compounding tax free. Uh, and then when I could put, you know, pull that money out, yes, you're going to like, okay, you're paying taxes on that, et cetera, but I could do it in my brokerage account too. So I am at that stage, like three years plus into this journey where it's just kind of like, all right, it's, it's there. I'm not, you know, on the app as much as I was checking. Okay. What's my monthly income out at now? It's still exciting. It's still, I, I love talking about it just to maybe inspire someone else because if I had started sooner, this thing would have really started to snowball because at 20, 30 years in. The compounding magic really kicks in. Yeah, so I, I agree too. I'm kind of, uh, I, I'd say in earnest, really started dividend investing very late 2018, early 2019. And, you know, my own path, I started just one day out of the blue. I don't even know what it was. I was just mm -hmm. thinking like, you know what? I think I heard stock market news or something. They were just going over like the Dow and S&P, what that did. And I was thinking like, you know what? I'm going to learn the stock market and I'm going to become like some high flying trader and I'll probably yeah. be able to quit my job in a couple of years. So naturally I started with penny stocks and yep. then gravitated yep. toward <laughs> swing trading and, and those yep. two Options. things didn't work out. And <laughs> yeah, I, I found out that for me, what I do very well is buy and hold with vice grip type hands. And it's so hard for me to sell things. So dividend investing is hand in glove if you're watching and you do very well at buying and sitting on things. Mm -hmm. So what are some of your um, ex things that you wish you would have, what's one lesson or one thing in dividend investing that you wish you would have known when you first started out? Yeah, for me, uh, it's like, I think 101 because I've been bur like last year burned a little bit uh, with one of the investments that I had. Um, it was a, a royalty trust that was paying out really well, went up huge during COVID and past couple of years and then kind of just like petered out a little bit on me last year. So I took my profits, mostly liquidated the position. So the first thing I would say is don't chase yields. Um, you know, that a lot of folks would sit there and say, well, I, you know, just throw out numbers. I don't want to alienate anybody or people make fun of me. I like he, this guy thinks he has money. I, you know how much money I have. It's just the point of like, all right, I'm going to chase this. It's got 10% yield. I put in 100K. And now I'm making 10K a year passive. That's amazing. And then it'll, you know, 10% every year and it's going to grow, grow, grow. Usually that's not sustainable unless there's a certain type of asset. Uh, and I found that, you know what? That's not best for me. You know, I, I love dividend rockets, uh, which is basically they're going to pay out really, really small uh, in terms of the, you know, the um, the dividend yield. And hopefully folks that have been following you to understand all that, what I'm the jargon I'm saying. But because of the price is appreciating so much, the yield is always so small, even if they're tra they're raising their dividends by seven to 10 to 12 percent a year, it's getting hidden by the growth in, in price. So I get my cake and eat it, too. I get price appreciation and growing dividends. And it's just like one of those snowballs that I personally love. And it's kind of, you know, caters to my dividend, um, to my growth uh, stock oriented type mentality. So those are the things I love. 
But I would say don't chase yields. Um, don't just buy things because of the yields. Invest in the company. And that's the main thing in, in the Dividend Millionaire book. I really wanted to hammer home, like, is this a good stock? Is it not? I said I said it incorrectly, actually. Is this a good company? You know, and then to invest in. It's the whole Warren Buffett thing, you know, buy it once, sit on, sit on your hands, sit, uh, own it forever. And it gets back to the, you know, Twitter and X thing. I just saw so many people like they were talking about AT&T and Philip Morris. And I was just like, you got to be kidding me with AT&T. Like, why do you think they're, I know, I know we had that conversation, but like, why would you think that like, it's a great company? They do provide a service. I actually use AT&T. My wife used to work there, but like, is it going to continue to grow dividends at double digits or the stock appreciation? There's thousands of companies that pay dividends. You can find a better option, but it was just because it had a huge dividend yield. Same with Philip Morris. And it's just like, do you see it going forward? That was the first thing. I'll keep going. The other thing that pissed me off was like, oh my God, it's a dividend king or it's a dividend aristocrat or it's like a, you know, a dividend knight or you know, whatever you know, term. Well, just because something's a dividend king for 50 years, they're like raising their dividends half a cent a year to stay on a list. So you got to keep that in mind and say, I'm investing my hard earned dollars today. Russ of, you know, right out of the military and stuff, putting his you know dollar in for 30 years. Is that business going to be around for 30 years? You don't want to have to like take it on the chin 10 years from now when that, that company starts to falter or cuts their dividends or, or suspends it. So that was the thing that really, you can tell I'm just getting fired up. Like that's what like the impetus of writing and I was taking notes and all this stuff. And I'm like, I got to get this information out there for a better way, almost of like that Buffett met methodology, Peter Lynch, all of these folks that like analyze companies and say, this is a really good company. By the way, they just happen to pay dividends. And so that was the genesis of, you know, the dividend millionaire. Dude, that's great. So many things. I have so many things. So yeah. basically he's saying <laughs> to uh, chase profits, don't chase <laughs> yield. Don't just focus on the dividend yield. I mean, yeah. it's okay if it's a byproduct, but the underlying business is paying that dividend yield and some yields the underlying business can't pay. So, I mean, you have to be careful of that. And it's, yeah, it can get so easy to get burned. And myself, I plead ignorance with AT&T because, you know, I got wrapped in everybody. Hey, if you're a dividend investor, you got to have yep. AT&T. And 100%. I remember driving around when I first started investing in it thinking like, Oh, look at there goes an AT&T truck. Oh, there's another AT&T truck. Oh, look at that. There's an AT&T store. I'm like, yeah, those oh people are God. in there working for me. But now I know better. I'm like, well, that means it's really capital intensive. They have to put f fuel in the trucks and maintain them. They have to rent the property, lights, out. So Everything. it's very, all those telecoms are really uh, heavily capital intensive and they're mm -hmm. highly competitive. And then the last thing I got from you, which, which reminded me of Ben Graham is saying that all you have to, one of the most important things I think you need to know is that stocks are actually little pieces of actual businesses. It's of a not, company. Yeah. It's not a stock ticker that just flitters around and goes up and down uh, on the whim of the market. And what are some of your, your favorite holdings with some of your favorite uh, uh, positions, if you can share them? I knew you were going to do that. I think last time I was like, oh, I don't want to do it. And uh, like, you can just them, give names. You know, we don't need percent. No, or it's, anything. Yeah. listen, it's just at a high level. And some of these people are like, oh, okay, great. There's no, it's not a stock tip. Like these are just like me personally. And it's not an advice. Uh, my portfolio, like Microsoft, Apple, you know, so, things like that, um, you know, NVIDIA uh, has been really kind to me and also a, a dividend paying stock. Ally Bank uh, has not been good to me the past couple of years in terms of like the actual return. But again, I just like the business models of, of some of these companies. And I, I put all of the, my holdings through basically the, the business checklist. You know, it's like 20, 20 to 22, three different kind of questions and benchmarks and hurdles. And at the time I purchased them, they really kind of passed all of them. Now, sometimes, you know, businesses become expensive, price to earnings, you know, ratio, the peg ratios gets out of whack, things like that. But for me, I, I kind of like the holdings. I understand it a little bit more of the tech side, uh, you know, and a little bit of the those types of companies, you know, MasterCard, Visa, where they kind of have a stranglehold on some of the payment process or things like that. Yeah, there's a lawsuit going through. And if you noticed, uh, Visa and some of those have been getting hit with yep. uh, the payment processing or is it the swipe? 
the swipe to pay, I think I should, <laughs> I should know that better. I kind of skimmed through real quickly, but yeah, yeah, I know Visa and MasterCard are really interesting, but you know, it, we're, there could be competition for them. So, you know, it's kind of that thing you always have to remember is that any business is always going to be under attack always. 100%. And eventually one day, it might not be for a couple hundred years, but one day they're going to just succumb to the, you know, uh, forces of creative destruction and yeah. if they can't keep up, but society will be better for it. So, yeah, I mean, it's, I, I guess you can't truly, I know people want to just buy something, hold it and never look again. That That's okay if you're buying a, an ETF, like the, the whole stock market. Like right. um, we put my wife into VTI, which is Perfect. a Vanguard fund. You're basically buying the entire investable U.S. stock market, almost 4,000 businesses. And when businesses go out of business, they drop out. And when new businesses come in or IPO like Reddit, you know, now you're an investor in that. Right. But yeah, so unless it's an ETF like that, you really don't have to look. That one you can forget about. But any individual business, I mean, you kind of got to keep the side eye on it at least to make sure that that they're not. So it's a little more involved if you're going to go that route. So with with your book, that checklist you talked about, that comes uh, when you buy the book, right? Do you include that? Yeah, it's 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 in there. And then, you know, if you're buying it through Gumroad and stuff, I've actually included the checklist as a separate PDF. And there's a case study in there as well. And an interview with, you know, soon to be dividend millionaire. I think uh, John Boy's up to 70K a, a year in dividends. That, wow. That's basically what he's been doing by buying uh, Canadian bank stocks. So that was it too. That was the fun of this, like meeting guys like you and every everybody, all walks of life, all around the world. Um, not just Canada in the U S but just like w different ways and, and flavors of investing. But yeah, the book contains the checklist. And again, it's like, uh, it's, you know, caveat, this is one person's point of view, but like I take people through, like it's on, it's actually on the other screen, company analysis, businesses analysis, dividend price and trend analysis. Like what should you look for? And that was what I was trying to give that knowledge to people because they sit there and it's like, Oh, I go to McDonald's or Costco. Great. The dollar fifty hot dog. I love that. You know, it's going to be around forever. Let's buy that 400 plus dollar stock. And it's just kind of like, yeah, it's a great business, but what about analyzing it? There's like 20 other questions you should ask. Like, is it a good stock? Is it a good business to invest in versus something you like? It's like, just because waste management picks up your garbage, you know, two times a, a week doesn't mean that you should buy them. And that was the thing I was kind of railing against. Okay, Starbucks might have been a buy 10, 15 years ago. Maybe it's a buy today, but do you know? And that's why I was trying to educate people through the story that in the book, The Dividend Millionaire, you know, between the main character, the newbie, and the kind of seasoned investor, just a different way of looking at things, kind of poking holes at the AT&Ts and the Philip Morris's of the world, you know, calling them dividend dogs, uh, and I explain why in the book. But that 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 was the bit. Really, it's just to say, okay, this is a game you can choose to play, play it right. There's a better way to play it versus just, oh, someone on, on X is showing me their top 15. I'm just going to buy what they buy. You don't know what they paid for it. You don't know why they bought it. You don't know if they're losing money. You don't know if they're very wealthy and putting a lot of money into their portfolio and they just show you, oh, I'm making 40K a year passive income. Well, how much did you put in? Did, was it a good return? Could you have done better? And that's the kind of questions that I want people to ask. Um, before just blindly following even people like me, anybody, you know, you should understand and learn this and it's not difficult to learn. There's free screeners and free tools all over the internet or in your palm of your hand and your phone that you can analyze a, a stock, you know, in a couple of seconds, you know, in terms of quality scores. And I know you, you have a couple that you use in screeners that just tell you, Hey, is this a quality dividend stock or not? I want people to have the knowledge, their fingertips and kind of understand Am, am I making a good decision with my hard earned money or not? Or am I just going to blow it? Yeah, no, I was just going to add on that and say, I mean, for, for 10 bucks, I look at all the knowledge. You will be a smarter and more informed investor, especially a dividend investor. If you buy the book and yeah, I, it's funny. Sometimes people like, oh, I got to pay money. It's like, no, you're compensating somebody for their time, for the knowledge <laughs> yeah. that they're sharing with you. 
And look, you don't have to buy it. Yeah. <laughs> you just move on, close the video, whatever. I don't close the video, but uh, yeah. but yeah, I mean, it's really, you know, link in the description below uh, if you want to click on it. And uh, I would highly recommend checking it out. I mean, it could, it'll literally pay for itself. Uh, that's one thing I've been learning with books is that, you know, you, you never know what millionaire or million dollar idea you're going to find inside of a book uh, that makes a click for you. Um, and tied to that, actually in the book, I reference a, a $10, I think it was 10 bucks uh, book that I bought and it was the strat investing strategy that I learned uh, and it netted me 58 K. So $10 turned into $58,000 within the span of nine months. They taught me options, right? I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll you know, there's the secret. And I named the, you know, if you get my book, you go in it, you read it, it's there, it's listed with the specific book that I use. And it's exactly what Russ said. You never know where your million dollar, your hundred thousand dollar idea is going to come from. And that's the power of reading and knowledge and sharing. Um, and that's why I read way too much. My kids joke about how much I read and oh, stocks and dividends, daddy, the, you know, buying stocks and all this other stuff. And it's like, yeah, yeah, it's a pretty nice uh bad habit to have reading and educating myself uh, on things, you know, turning a dollar into two or three or five, uh, rather than working get to get back to your uh, Buffett quote, you know, making money while you sleep. It's a great, great feeling. And you also started about, you know, how does it feel millionaire, all that. The main thing is financial security and and knowing that, you know, I'm not there 100% in my personal opinion, but becoming financially indestructible where things could happen. I could lose my job, things like that happen, sickness, et cetera, and I'll be just fine. And that's the point of like, why I do what I do? It's not for me personally. It's not here to like gloat online or anything. It's for my family and, and you know, to, to support them uh, and educate and teach them if I'm not around. That's the goal. It's to share what's possible, to share what you're doing. You're sharing the knowledge. I mean, we're only on this spinning blue ball together for a little bit. And why not do something better? Learn, you know, what What better way is there than to learn from other people that have come before you? And I again, I know Charlie Munger was very fond of learning mm -hmm. from the eminent dead, which I guess now he is yeah. one of those. He's joined the ranks yeah. of the eminent dead. And I, dude, well, we, we don't have to go down there. We'll just leave him yeah. there and we'll bring it back to us here. And I'll just land the plane by saying that, dude, I, I appreciate it. And I mean, what, what do you want to say? Any word to the wise, any last parting thoughts for those of you out there in the wide, wide, wonderful world of YouTube watching us? For me, you know, just to, to a couple of groups of people or to specifically one person in different groups, if you haven't started, you're feeling overwhelmed, just start. It's, it's super simple. You could start for like a buck, you know, it's not difficult. And you pick, you can just pick a stock or you just pick an ETF, SPY or VTI, VOO, you know, you, you choose it ETF and you just get started investing. And that's the key living below your means, just automatically saving a certain percentage and then live on the rest. You can just blow it. You can spend 80% of your money and you're probably going to be okay. Um, if you're investing it wisely. So those are just like a couple of tips, invest in yourself. You know, the, I made fun of the gurus that kind of say, oh, you know, um, make more money, stop worrying about saving money, go for uh, making more money. A couple of things about those people, they have the gift of the gab. They're able to talk and sell and probably push and promote themselves at work. You don't know what kind of um, their situation, did they have a leg up on the competition? How'd they get to where they are? Someone making 300, 600, $800,000 a year, doling out the advice of don't worry about saving, focus on making more money. They're probably not the best people to get advice from, uh, especially if you're not a natural born salesperson or have extreme talent. Do both. How about that? Learn how to save, invest, live below your means, and then also invest in yourself. Um, so that's one piece. The other, try, try your hand at dividend investing, try your hand at growth investing, try your hand at options trading, whatever it is, just don't lose your shirt. Uh, what the advice I give to people is most people should just invest in ETFs um, on the entire market because uh, they want to just get on with their life. Focus on making more money, spending less, having fun with your family. Money just goes into an, uh, you know, an index fund and you're great. If you want 10% of your money, X percent of your money, I called it my Vegas fund when I was starting. I'm just going to YOLO the money into a couple of stocks that I think are amazing. It worked for me. 
You know why? Because it, it's not rocket science to understand that this Apple would become huge once iTunes came out. Put a couple of bucks there, a couple of bucks here, works out. The rest, index funds. You want to try your hand at options trading? You want to try your, your hand at penny stocks? There's a reason 80 to 90% of those folks don't make money. Um, the only people who make money are the people who are selling those courses about penny stocks and options trading. Those are the people making the money in there. But maybe you're the you're the ten percent or the five percent or the three percent that are able to do it. Go ahead and try it. Just have a safety safety net. Put money aside. Invest in yourself. Uh, and lastly, don't forget to have fun. Um, I worked super hard for 10, 15 years during this grind from like zero to actually you know seven figures. Uh, I wish I would have had a little bit more fun along the way. Um, but you know, for a guy who just loves to run, work out and read and hang with his family, I don't need much, uh, in, in the way of spending to have fun. So there's a lot of ways follow what works for you. Just, just sample it out. Um, just don't do anything stupid. Stay away from margin, uh, leverage debt and that kind of stuff. Uh, only, you know, if you're going to use debt, buy real estate investing and that type of stuff, not to like, um, buy a fancy car to impress people who care less, of, um, who you are. They'd just rather have your stuff. Great. So Fabio says, put all your life savings into TSLY. <laughs> Don't put all your money into TSLY. It's a, yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a running joke amongst a lot of us dividend investors. Yeah. It's a Tesla ETF. And I will add on that investing in yourself is really important because that's one of the best inflation proof uh, things that you can do is increasing your own knowledge and your own skill and ability because even if the dollar went away and one day we were trading and paying people in seashells, well, if you're a great neurosurgeon or you're somebody that uh, has a skill that society wants, then uh, you're going to be okay. You're going to get a lot of seashells and you're going to be able to feed yourself and your family. And yeah, and I the last thing I will say too is to always be uh, aware because people on Wall Street and, you know, if it can be sold, people will sell it. So there's usually a lot more money to be made in the selling than there is in the investment 100%. management side of the business. So I love it, man. Well, I'm glad we could do this again. It took a little while to, uh, to get it in. And if anybody wants to reach you, uh, where can they do that at? The the best place is, again, I'm not as active in social, I've just been doubling down on, on fitness, family and fun lately. Um, is just on X, F Marciano, you know, just my first initial last name Marciano. That's the best place. Hit me up, say you watch me on the pod and, uh, you know, <laughs> you had any questions or things like that. Beautiful. I will have that linked below. And uh, hey, thank you all. Thank you, Fabio. Thank you, everybody, for giving us a little bit of your time and watching us to the end. So I'll see you guys in the next video.